Hi everyone. Today I'd like to go over a few tips and tricks to improve your Quant Connect experience and to increase your productivity on Quant Connect. So this is not this is pretty trivial, but sometimes when you're coding, the screen here, the coding area here, might be a little small for some people, especially or those that may not have the best vision, like me. So there's this little button down here. I actually didn't really, I, didn't, I, I used Quant Connect for a while and I, for a few months, I actually did not know that this, there's this button here that could collapse it. And ta-da, there's a lot more space. The next tip I'd like to go over is how to use the debugger. So often, People like to put self.debug statements like everywhere. <sighs> However, like to see what the code is doing. However, there's actually a way to look at variables and such without, <clears throat> without having to use a bunch of debug statements. So, here I have a buggy code. It's probably pretty obvious to find what the bug is when you look at it. However, for larger blocks of code, when there is a lot more stuff, it might be harder to diagnose the problem because of all the other stuff that may be distracting. Okay, so I want to plot the fifth element of the rolling window here. So I just store the close daily close values of spy and I want to put the fifth element and because uh, it's zero indexing I put a four <laughs> and four is the fifth element let's see and so I as I mentioned before this code is bugged so it will not do what I want And I'm looking for the custom chart, the chart with the title of custom, but I can't find it. So, so how can I find this problem? I can set a breakpoint somewhere. Let's just put it, let's just put it like, let's just put it here and let's back test. And we can watch a few variables here. Let's watch a few variables. Uh, self dot rw dot is ready. It could be one variable we watch. And then self dot rw dot self dot rw dot count. So let's iterate. Here, actually, let's just put it here. <laughs> you know. Okay, so let's keep running it. So you can see the count is zero and it's not ready. And the count is zero again, and it's not ready. I've done this multiple times and the count is not increasing. And so then that means I, uh, from there, I can deduce that there's like something wrong with my rolling window logic. And it is indeed the case that I am returning early before I can even add this. And also another issue is that we're done warming up or uh, let's just say this wasn't here. Let's just say this was down here. Another problem is that we're not warming up this rolling window during the warming up phase. We can saw, saw earlier. So we can see, we can just keep running this and see that this count is not updating. And we can we we know the bug. It hap is because the order of events is not correct. So from that debugging, we can put that up here. So what happens if we're debugging a different class? 
Let's just say we have a class blob. Um, let's give it a def five. And what it will do is uh, make it get. It'll give us a random number. So let's do x equals random dot rand to uh, five and return x. So what happens if I wanted to debug this value? Self dot debug x. Like, then we have to do a bunch of this stuff def init self algo and then self dot algo equals algo, and then we'd have to pass in Bob. So, so let's do Bob. And we want to do Bob dot five. However, because we want to debug something with the, the statement, we would have to pass in the algorithm, the QC algorithm object. So we pass in self. And then after we're done debugging, we're, we, we, we don't want this anymore. We remove this. But this is just so much work, right? So instead, we can just put a breakpoint here and just get rid of all this de uh, all this uh, nonsense. We can just put a breakpoint here and then we can see what X is instead of trying to print it out with self.debug or self.log. So let's see it. And we can watch this X variable. And it's definitely really helpful in the cases when you're doing something like machine learning or you're using some sort of stochastic model because you usually want to make it a separate class in order to do to use separation uh, to use the separation search principle you see here oh, I can't see that there it is so you can see the X. And we see this X without doing any debug statements. And something really cool in the debugger as well is you can do some other, you can carry out some complicated stuff. Like you can run a whole code. You can even do like len. Apparently that doesn't work. <laughs> You can like uh, apply functions on stuff. So let's just let's just make a random function. Just make a random array. Actually, I meant array. Let's just make a random array equals one, two, three. One thing to note when you're using the debugger is that it does not execute the line you're on. It executes all, so say if we're here, R would never, would not get assigned at this breakpoint. So that's just one thing to be sure you uh, watch out for is. Okay, so let's look at that. So we can do len of r. And we can even do some crazy, like we can basically do anything. So let's just square all the items in r. A scoop for a n r. And we can do some complicated stuff in this watch. Okay, and that is uh, a brief overview of how to use the debugger. And the debugger is a great tool as it redu or significantly reduces the amount of debug, self.debug print functions you have to use, or the self.log, if you're trying to figure out what the error is. OK, let's go to the next tip. OK, so say we have two 
equity trading strategies. Sorry about that. Uh, so I say we have two equity trading strategies and we want to group them into one folder, like just to organize things. It's like say we have Bitcoin strategies, we have Forex strategies, but here we want to group our equity strategies. What we can do is equities. We can create a folder name here, equities, and just add it here. And then it'll magically create a equities folder. So let's open a project. And we can see here, now this is here. And let's go here and put this same folder name. And we can see both of them are here. So the, we don't need to have the folder. So we can just, let's put this in a separate folder. So like uh, Forex, this is not actually Forex strategy, but just for the sake of demonstration. And now we have Forex folder. And this is a great way to organize your stuff. Okay, next, I'd like to uh, show you guys how to figure stuff out. <laughs> so say I want to know what to invest in right? symbols. So I can just type in quant connect, get invested symbols. And Google creates a list of stuff that I can uh, look through. I mean, like a bunch of Quant Connect forms and blogs and stuff like that, because I put Quant Connect here. I personally don't use the forum search. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I work with Quant Connect, and, but I don't use the forum search. But I think, yeah, in my opinion, using Google to search these things is really good because Google has a bunch of these algorithms that sort of like lets Google know what you're thinking and what you want. Uh, Quant Connect does not employ these mind reading technologies like Google. <laughs> okay, so I want to know what stocks I hold. So let's just. Let's just buy QQQ and Spy. So it's not that bad. And so say, so say I need to keep track of what the equities I own. So I don't know. Okay, so. I went to Google, I searched uh, Quant Connect Get Invested Symbols, I found this thread, and here I, I found this. Let's copy it in and let's log it. Or we can even debug it as it is something we use earlier. Let's just put exit this five here so that this line can be executed. And we can see, and we can see here that we are invested in these two simple options here. And let's apply what we learned earlier. So the symbol objects kind of look weird. So let's do x dot value for x in invested because these are symbol objects. The symbol dot value will give us the tickers. And see your spy and QQQ. Okay, the next tip I would like to show you is how to figure thing like, like say I have equities, but I also want to have cryptos in this algorithm for any reason. 
Um, and this brings me to another point. So what happens if I forget what the add crypto is? So I can go into this API tree and see what see what's in the add crypto. And you can see I, I can find all these arguments. And so please note, not every method can be found in the API tree, but like when, you, when you're just looking up something simple and you want to see all the arguments, look up in this API tree and you can see all the arguments. And so I want to use a specific brokerage uh, data because I will be using that brokerage for trading. Let's just do that. So let's just uh, mark it dot uh, Bitfinex. And I know that this argument is for the market because I saw it, the function arguments in the API tree earlier. What happens if I want to do invested for only equities? So these are all simple objects, right? So I want to add if statement. If x dot key dot something uh, x dot is for this symbol object so how do i tell the equity how do i tell the security type so let's do this quant connect symbol class and then i can see so you can click on either of these like if you click on this one you just have to click another time to members and I can see that all these properties that I want, might want to use. So sometimes if it's not in the documentation, you can just find it in the lean documentation. And I usually get here, I don't look, I don't look in here. I usually just Google it. Like, how about let's do order then. Quant connect order event class. And I can find this and I can, so on my on order event, I can see the fields of order event and Oops, not order event. I meant, uh, yeah, I didn't mean order event. Class. And I can see all the properties of an order event. And so I can use these in my code, even if they aren't explicitly documented in the documentation. So, symbol? Okay, so what type is my security? Is, am I in? Okay, yeah. Fields. Um, sorry, I saw it earlier. Oh, found it. <laughs> it's public form. Security type. Okay, so the security type. Uh, but what are the security types? Security. Uh, what? So let's look at the security type uh, object. Oops, no, no. Security type, security type, security type. And it's the enum. Let's see what it was. Oh, we found it. Equity. So like, like you can have multiple guesses like stock, share. But when you look here inside the link docking decision, you can know the exact thing you should put and uh, let's confirm this to make sure that uh, BTC, BTC USD one let's let's just confirm that we do not have any uh, any crypto in this list because we're filtering it for only equities. So we can just keep this here. <laughs> we had it earlier. So you can see here, we can't, we get invested hasn't been initialized yet. So we can just step through our org of them. That's how we can step. Or we can just do this, I think.
Oops, I forgot to add the and statement. Here, let me just. Okay, so sometimes when you do debugging, you can it stops you from coding. So you have to press the stop button to be able to type again. Okay, let's get back to it. something. So we are using the debugger to figure this out. Oh yeah, you have to uh, run it one more time. And there we have it. Oops, X dot value. And we can see that BTC USD is not is not in our invested list. Okay. Next, uh I hope that was a good another good uh, example of using the debugger. Okay, so furthermore, if you are really really stuck, let's do this commute. If you are really really stuck, you can create a new discussion with your problem. If you cannot, if you search and search, you can't find anything. So, walk can. So say I have a bug with universe selection. Describe your bug. Describe bug. Here, here are here are my ideas, or like or additional info, or what I've tested. I attach a back test. So let's choose a random one. I add a bunch of tags and I submit. And then either the community or some Quant Connect staff will get back to you and help you. And <laughs> this is, for this option, uh, the more you detail, the easier and the quicker the solution be solved. So, and that is another way to uh, uh, figure things out. And what happens if you want to increase your productivity in your idea generation? <laughs> so, not many, some people might not know this, but we have a strategy library of a bunch of strategies. So, what you can do is cl clone one of these and then 
adjust it to your liking. We have a bunch of strategies and we are constantly adding strategies to this library. So it has a video, check this one out. It's optimal spare trading. <laughs> you guys might know why I am suggesting this one. <laughs> and what you can do is clone these and change it up a little bit and you can and you can find something profitable. <laughs> I hmm, let me think. Are there any? Are there? Oh yeah. Also, you can also do this bootcamp. I've done all that. So the Austrian one. But <laughs> so this bootcamp is also has some good examples of how to program. And I think that's about it. Uh, please. Oh, so. If you have your any of your own tips or tricks to improve productivity, be sure to put them down in the comment below and to sh so that everyone else can improve their productivity with your tips too. And thank you for watching. <laughs>